Hello everyone, it's Thomas Jujubee and Ultraman Arc has been officially announced and like any other Ultraman announcement we don't just have a look at the character in a poster we also have a bit of cast information and synopsis information so it's worth taking a little bit of a look and breaking down some of this information if you want to see the trailer and read this information for yourself I will be linking all of that in the description also if you're curious about what I'm wearing this will be announced soon make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for that announcement later so this announcement it kind of came out of nowhere at least in my opinion usually we have at least like a teaser for the next Ultraman season before the full trailer and poster and everything but the Blazar movie came and went did not have a single teaser for Ultraman arc or anything about that so the ordering of the information here is a bit weird so I'm just gonna start with the synopsis since it kind of tells us everything so in a town called Hoshimoto City a giant object towers named the Monohorn which is actually a kaiju's horn stuck in the ground since an incident 16 years ago. This was the incident when kaiju appeared simultaneously around the world and has been since called K-Day. Since then, the Global Defense Force, or GDF, has been dealing with the kaiju with force, while the SKIP, or Scientific Kaiju Investigation and Prevention Center, works closely with the community in scientific investigations and evacuation guidance to prevent the occurrence and aggravation of kaiju disasters. Skip has also been investigating the monohorn, the horn of the intergal or sorry, galactic beast Monogelos or Monogelos, which appeared on K Day. Yuma, then only 17 years old, was camping with his parents in Mount Shishio when Monogelos attacked but somehow miraculously survived unhurt. This experience led him to pursue the path of kaiju biology research, and despite his traumatic past, he has not lost his imagination to dream. As a rookie investigator, Yuma joined the skip and was assigned to the Hoshimoto City Branch. Not long after, another kaiju disaster occurs. As Yuma sees the desperate people in front of him, a strong will springs into his mind, I want to protect them. It was at this moment that Yuma hears the voice of Ru Rushin, Rution, I don't know how they're going to pronounce that, the bean of light that he once saw as a child. You and I are the same. Unleash your imagination! Ah. <laughs> Mystic light emerges from Yuma's hand, then they become Ultraman Arc with the power of imagination, and that's it. In regards to the aesthetics, I think they are very interesting. <laughs> like a cube Ultraman gimmick is just kind of very random. You can kind of see it has a picture of arc's face on it and it also has a zero one on the side in some of the images so we're gonna get more i assume he sticks it in the arc ariser which is a pretty awesome name it's very weird to me like i, I do like how he kind of like twists pieces around to create its full form i think that's pretty cool it's just it kind of unfortunately has like the problem a lot of ultraman risers have to me where it just looks like a nothing device like it's just a thing it has no real world it doesn't look like it has like a real world basis or something like it's not like a thing on your arm or like a, a gun that you turn into a device or something it's just it's just a thing he holds and i don't love that as for the design himself ultraman arc i like it but it does look very generic ultraman like it's I, th I thought it looked like an Orb Origin kind of thing at first. Like, it looks like Orb Origin the first, I think, because that was, like, all red. Because he even has, like, a blue thing on his forehead, like, Orb. I don't I don't think we've had yellow eyes in a while for Ultraman. I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's been since Taiga, I think, since we've had, like, straight-up yellow eyes. So that's pretty cool. I do like the yellow eyes. Like, I don't hate the design. There's nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. It's just... It looks so generic, and I know Ultraman likes to stick with, like, its its roots and stuff, but, like, Blazard was just last year, and that looks like an Ultraman, but it looks so radically different from everything else. And this guy just, I'm not, like, I don't know, it's weird. I don't want to say I'm not vibing with the design, because I like him. I just don't like how generic he looks. Like, he has these blue lines on his forehead, and that's pretty cool. Like, I think the head is the best part. I wish they kind of like tried to incorporate the blue lines or like the weird kind of holes in the crest into the rest of the design. It kind of looks like you could stick like any show Ultraman on this body and it would look exactly the same. Yuma's backstory seems like that's kind of the thing that leaps out the most to me because it seems like he's already had some kind of event with 
uh, Luteon, um, and then later they merge into the, the actual Ultraman, and I guess they're all based on Yuma's, like, designs, like his sketches as a child. I think that's the thing that's really grabbing me about this, because, first of all, we have we have a name like an actual name for this Ultraman. That's not the name of the Ultraman. Like his name is not Ark. His name they've told us is Rution, and then he merges with Yuma, and then they become Ultraman Ark. I think that's really cool. Like that reminds me kind of like I guess um, it's like if Zet and Haruki, uh, like if Zet had a different name before they become Alpha Edge. So I hope they have. I don't think they have different designs. You can kind of see it in the trailer. But I think that's still pretty cool that he has like a name, but then once he merges with a human, now he has an Ultraman title. I also quite like the the world building that they've established here, where like Kaiju have been appearing for like 16 years because of uh, what this Monogelos monster appeared, and then now its horn is like stuck in the ground after it was defeated. So I guess but it's kind of vague, but. I'm really curious to see what that's going to be about. Like, I really like that they've set up, like, it's not just a, this is an Ultraman world with Kaiju in it, like, they've set up this kind of inciting incident. There's this world here that I'm interested to learn more about, and it, it connects to Yuma, I guess, a bit with that. I also, I think it's cool that he's, like, he's part of an attack team, but they're not, like, an attack team. They're, like, a, or he's, like, a biologist and skip itself is seems to not be like an attack team it's more of a um like a research division yeah like they're pursuing kaiju biology or something like that so i think that's pretty cool like they're not just going to be actively fighting that could be something a little bit different so the show starts july 6th between now and then we're obviously going to get some a different trailer and some more cast information um and that's because and obviously like some kaiju as well that's just how this goes i think it's pretty cool that ultraman will like give us a first announcement but they'll also give us just a little bit more like a, an actual trailer this is editing thomas jujub from the future because for some reason after the initial information came out we got this extended trailer leak which has the exact same footage except there's a couple minutes of new forms so we have confirmation that arc is going to be getting form changes which i'm very happy about i miss those in blazar so i'm glad we're getting classic blue and red form changes back this time they look like their armor we got like a red punchy form and a blue flight form they look very cool we don't have names for these yet i believe because we're not actually supposed to see these yet but i'm very happy we have and we've also got a look at this weird sword thing he has but he summons it with his eyes so his eyes are on the sword and i think that's pretty cool again something i was kind of missing from blazar was like so uh, some extra toys i like how blazar wasn't very toy focused but i think it's cool that we're going back a little bit to kind of basics in a different way where we've got classic form changes in a another toy that he can use another thing is basically like the standard of ultraman now at this point is that this will be streaming on youtube their official youtube channel simulcasted it's always like literally as soon as it is done airing in japan they'll start streaming it on youtube so if you're interested in this season be sure to stay tuned to the ultraman official youtube channel because they're gonna be putting everything up there so you can catch it seems like this will be another good way to get into the franchise as there doesn't seem to be any links or connections to an older season i will be reviewing episode one in a video and then i'll be continuing doing weekly short reviews and i'll probably do a season review as well once that all wraps up but that's that's way in the future for now if you want to hear my thoughts on ARC as we get closer to the release, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out my Patreon for early access content and maybe figure out what this is. And I hope to see you next time.